Hello and welcome back to another episode of The Daily Shave. My name is John, and today I'm going to bring you a shave featuring Dr. John's 13. So 13 is uh, one of those releases that comes back from time to time from Dr. John's. Uh, I'm not sure if it's a seasonal. It originally was a limited edition uh, and was made for a group wet shaver review. So before we talk more about the scent and more about the soap itself, let me show you what other gear I'll be using today. So for the razor, we're going to be using the West Coast Shaving Live Head, which I've been really enjoying. This was designed for West Coast Shaving by Charcoal Goods. And for the brush here, uh, I have this beautiful brush from That Darn Rob. You can see I've already loaded the soap with about a 30 second load from the soap, just to speed things up. So this thing's great. This is a, uh, for those familiar with That Darn Rob brushes, uh, the knot here is the V1 Fanchurian. And at the end of the shave, we'll finish it off with the matching splash for 13. All right, so I'm gonna wet my face and start the face lather. So while I build this, let me talk a little bit about Dr. John's 13. Dr. John's has a wonderful vegan formula soap. They're currently on volume three, which is um, obviously the third version uh, of their soap base. And really each time they've, they, they, they've reformulated, it's always brought improvements in, you know, in some category, whether it be slickness, post-shave, and that's no different with volume three. I've shaved with this volume three for, um, for a few times now, and I would say it's about of average thirst. You want to be careful not to add too much water too quickly. Otherwise, it's, it's going to get too runny on you. With, with this brush, uh, with, rather with this knot, uh, I like to do alternating um, kind of smushes <laughs> with the displaying the knot on my face just to get some lather out of there and then alternate that with painting strokes. And that's just to provide some agitation and some exfoliation to the to the skin and to the and for the beard. I am working with about uh, three days of beard growth. So I think the lithe head is kind of nice for that. For, for that. Rather, I like it better for kind of two, three days or more of beard growth, as opposed to like um, something very light, like a, like a daily use. Okay, that's enough lathering. Let's get into the shave. Here again is that live head. And today I have loaded with a Astra SP blade. And here we go. So you can really hear that audio feedback when it's like this amount of hair, this amount of hair growth. So 
but it does it with, with no problem. Interesting thing is because the, the top cap has a bit more of an angle, it took a little bit to get used to, maybe like about two or three shaves, just to find the sweet spot where I wasn't um, relying on riding the bottom cap too much, which just made it, made this razor head too aggressive if I didn't have that balance of, uh, of really riding on the top cap. But once I got that the angle down, I mean, it really sped up my shave, sped up my shaves. And this guy is, is of you know medium aggression, efficiency. So I kind of like that too, where um, you can kind of just go about your business and you know, not take too long. Really no problems getting under under the nose, you know, by the mustache area or by the chin. So that's pretty good for the first pass. Let me rinse this off and I do want to talk a little bit more about the scent. All right, I just want to rinse off the actual tub itself. So as you can see here, here's uh, the tub for 13. You can see uh, the label down here at the bottom with all the ingredients. The soap is fairly firm. So I'm pressing pretty hard just to even get a little bit of an indent. So it's a, it's a firm soap. And they are in tins for those who haven't picked up Dr. John's before. Now, I know people, uh, wet shavers are split on um, like tins versus plastic jars. And I do just want to note that Dr. John's has you know, intentionally chosen uh, the, the metal tins as a way to kind of reduce the amount of plastics being used, especially winding up in the ocean uh, for those who are environmentally concerned. So, you know, even if they might get dinged up in transport or if you're you know, traveling with them, um, that's, you know, that's a good enough reason for me. It doesn't bother me either way. But, um, the main thing is, you know, it, it displays this nice label very well. And uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's a good, it's a good uh, reason to have the tins. So uh, let me just show the label again. Here you can see 13 has uh, a pinup uh, kind of devilish woman on the front here. And as I mentioned before, this was originally a scent created for a wet shaver review. And the scent itself is about uh, a medium, maybe a medium strength, five out of 10 uh, off the puck. And the, the scent itself that was requested is uh, it's, it's quite masculine. Uh, some of the notes include oud, hedion, musk, and iso e super. Now, uh, those who are more into fragrances are probably, you know, are, are familiar with all those. But uh, again, uh, for if you need a little bit of translation, it does make for a masculine scent. It's also a very clean scent. Yeah, a clean scent with a hint of floral. But uh, as one who, you know, florals are a mixed bag for me. I have no problems with this one. It's, uh, it's very well blended. Um, I can't pick any one note out in particular. And it's not, you know, off the soap at least, it's not um, super heavy. This could be daily use. Uh, despite being a, uh, kind of a heavier hitter, I think this is actually, um, 
it's well-rounded enough that it can be used for any season. So that being said, let me lather up for pass number two. If you hear some other noises in the background, um, this is being recorded on a Saturday, so that means my kids, the little ones are around, so you might hear them stomping around, hopefully not breaking out into an, into an argument outside the door. But never, never a dull moment. In fact, I'm kind of squeezing this shave before we have to head out to a birthday party. And I did not want to be a scraggly mess. Otherwise, I most often do, do these shaves in the evening uh, after they've gone out of sleep. So we are good for pass number two. All right, here we go against the grain now. Now I have found, and after doing a few of these videos for you guys, that during the actual shaving, I'd rather not talk too much, besides the small comments on the actual, um, it was happening as I'm shaving. I'm giving, like, giving you scent notes and soap impressions, it's just, too taxing for my brain. <laughs> I just wind up nicking myself. Now I've tried a few different blades though in this in the live head. And this Estra SP, I think, might be my favorite pairing. And of course, just as I explained, small little nick here. That's okay. All right, I'm gonna rinse this off. All right, so second pass is done, and we are in fact gonna stop at two passes for today. It's one of those things where I can always go back for a little touch up, maybe by the chin here, by the neck, but I just found it's not worth the, um, the usual irritation that comes with that, just to have it feel smooth you know, after the shave. Appearance-wise, it's fine, so that's all we need. All right, 
And so let's finish off with the matching splash for 13. And we'll see how the scent kind of really opens up when it's not, you know, muted by the soap base. All right. Now this is now this is where it gets interesting. As I've mentioned, and as you know, many folks who do the daily shave or re review shaving soaps, you know, the soap bases will mute certain notes that and then allow others to kind of rise up to the top. So it's not a it's it's not often a accurate representat representation, especially if it's the original scent that the artisan is coming up with. So as I mentioned, it's very clean, clean and masculine um, off the, from the soap. Uh, I, that darkness definitely comes out more in the aftershave. The florals don't come out more. Actually, if, if anything, they get further suppressed because the other, these other notes, like the, the oud and the musk kind of come out a little bit more. I, st I still really like it though. I mean, I'm not, I don't usually go for overly musky scents. And well, there's a hint of something that's a little more kind of like classic, uh, classic fragrance, classic aftershave. I would say this is this is more refined than that. So it's not a. What I mean by that is, you know, it might hint at something that you smelled in like a pharmacy aftershave, that kind of musky, kind of old school swagger kind of thing going on. But there are enough kind of contemporary notes here that I don't know, really, really make it more sophisticated. And so either way, I would say it's definitely a masculine scent and a li little bit more darkness comes out in the aftershave, but I'll still stick by saying that um, other than maybe a really, really kind of like hot, humid day, this, this scent will be usable um, in, in all other situations. So I've, you know, I've really enjoyed uh, testing this one and um, it's, it's unique. And I think if you kind of, those notes sound interesting to you, it's definitely worth uh, worth checking out. So uh, that'll be all for my shave. Again, today I've been uh, t talking to you about Dr. John's 13. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. You can catch more videos from me on my YouTube channel, Lather Ho Lather Hog. Uh, that's youtube.com slash Lather Hog. And yeah, really enjoyable shave. Uh, I gotta learn to take my own advice and um, pay more attention. <laughs> Uh, as I'm doing that, especially that against the green pass, but you know, really good shave. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you guys next time. Take care.